<laughs> he's a perfectionist. He doesn't, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to teach him, like, we don't do perfectionism here. <laughs> we get it done. <laughs> Good? All right, we're ready. All right, as you rolling? As George P. Uh, coils up some main sheet, uh, uh, brother, I know you got to leave today. You got a flight taking you out of here, but I wanted to get you on camera one last time. This is your best day, best day uh, of the event. How do you feel? Oh, I'm tired, man. <laughs> it, this place, it, I don't know how to describe it. There's no rhyme or reason. You get in a good lane of breeze, and you can sail 20 degrees higher and two knots faster than a guy 30 feet away, 20 feet away from you. 10 feet away from me. I had one guy reach out from under me and just hammer down and put 300 meters on me in a minute, minute and a half, like not even. Um, it, it'll make you go crazy. I'm glad I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Always tells it like it is, George. Uh, um, so so what's, your next, uh, what's your next event then? Oh, we're going to a uh, Congressional Cup next week uh, with Bill Hardesty, Matt Cassidy, uh, I think Andrew Campbell's our tactician, kind of a host of other guys, so I'm excited about that. Uh, I've sailed, I did Ficker Cup with Bill and the Catalinas a couple years ago, and we just, we screwed ourselves out of the win on that one, and I'm excited to, to show up at a match race event for once and, uh, and, and have a shot at taking home some prize money. Well, I know, you know, some, some of the guys just say, you know, they love the moth so much that when they do the other stuff, it's their job, and they like it, but this is what they love. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be here if I didn't love this class and, and these boats. And, you know, honestly, it's probably the only thing keeping me alive as a professional sailor just because you got to come out here and you got to bring your A game and you got to know what's going on with everything, with your equipment, with your sails, with the tactics. With It's just, it's it re really requires every aspect of your sailing ability to be at the top if you want to do well in this class. And it, it's, I think it's made me better on the other boats that I sail. Well, we talked about that a little bit yesterday. You know, you, you're going to Charleston in a couple of weeks for what may be the biggest Melgus 24 event in the year in the U.S., uh, 35 plus boats. Um, and uh, 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 with the Leyline.com boat and the whole quantum racing team, um, how is it going from this boat to that boat? Oh, I, I love going from this boat to that boat. It's a lot easier and it's uh, completely, I mean, it's it's almost the same when you sail the boats well um you know it's it, it's all about boat balance it's all about speed you know it, it's just so much of it's about balance and being smooth and and being able to just know when the boat feels like it's going fast and be able to look around and, and place yourself nicely on the course with with relation you know in relation to your uh, to your closest competitors what about to what about i mean to talk about placement today um obviously you don't want to tack too much uh, or jive too much because the wind was so sketchy um but at the same time there are huge shifts on the course and and the, you know guys who are nailing them were uh, uh you know were, were really making out so w in wind like this what's the difference between uh trying to be in the right side of a shift and just going fast and trying to stay on the foils uh, today there was just enough breeze that all the good guys were staying on the foils the entire time. I didn't see anybody gack today. Um, so today it was all about nailing the shifts. You could foil tack today. I foil tacked a lot today. That helped my, helped my races a lot. Um, basically, you know, this, it's like sailing any other boat in light air, especially here. People are sailing with deep sails, you know, or trying to make them as powerful as they can, sheeting really hard. And with the low wind weight here, the, the bad air is unbelievable, man. If you're if you're within 40 meters of another guy, you're gonna be affected, and it's heinous. I mean, you're dying. And the thing is, like, the the pressure's so localized, you can't. If if you're in a vein of pressure, you got to just eat the guy's bad air, and just live because you're you're gonna lose if you have to tack. I mean. and, that, and that's where we see guys rounding right behind, and instead of tacking off just digging down 30, 40 degrees. Well, you saw, I mean, that, that wasn't always by choice. If you, if you went to the left-hand turn at the bottom of this course today, there were times where I was the guy who, I mean, these boy, boats won't foil under about nine and a half knots upwind. There were times where I was, like, pinching, going as high as I could, going, like, nine knots, just because I knew if I could keep my bow up, I'd get into that left-hand shear, and then I could put my bow down and go, and I passed seven boats at one mark rounding by doing that. Uh, unfortunately, I was the victim of that same thing three other races. So, 
whatever. Well, dude, it's great to see you. To this guy too. He, he, had he had a raging race. I know, I know. Well, hey, man, you know, great day today. It's good to see you going well, and uh, we'll check in with you in Charleston, brother. Sweet, thanks. Have a good flight. Right on.